Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I am Chef Marcus Giuliano and I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is health, one of my favorite missions if you've watched my, uh, my, my YouTube channel or caught my blog. Um, I want to talk about oil today. And I, I'm really anti-fried foods, first of all. Fried foods are just so detrimental to your health. But I'm also really anti-adding oil to foods. And chefs are notorious for using a ton of fat in their food, okay? Now, they're using added fat. There's a difference between using a fatty food and using foods that, the foods that you're going to add, like, refined fat to. There's a ton of refined fat in kitchens, like butter. Um, oils, especially olive oil. I mean, it's all over kitchens. So, you know, it's not, it's, it's as like we're eating enough fatty food to begin with because we eat nuts, we eat grains, we eat beef, right? All that has a ton of fat in it. And now we're bombarding that food with even more fat. I mean, I know places that will cook a steak, okay, which is 70, 80% fat by, by, uh, by caloric value, which is extremely high. Even an egg is like 60%, 65% fat by caloric value. Then you make egg salad out of it with mayonnaise, which is more fat. It's just, it, it's absurd to think what we do with our food and how much fat we add into it. So I know places that will actually cook a steak and when the steak's done, rest it in melted butter. Surround it with more fat and infuse more fat in. I worked at one place where we made a ton of roasted garlic butter. Every single piece of protein that went on the grill was brushed so liberally with garlic butter, which is butter. And then you serve it on the plate and you dab it with butter again, like as if that steak needs more butter. But this is this is the mentality. This is what this is what chefs know. Chefs know that hey. If I want my food to taste good, and if I want, you know, a good rating, if I want five stars, I want a Michelin star, I want, a, you know, five stars from my local newspaper, I've got to pack on the fat. And it's just not the case whatsoever. So here's an interesting thing about olive oil that I want to share with you from Dr. Clapper. I'm going to roll into this video. And I'm a firm believer that we get enough fat, especially if we do a vegan diet, we still get enough fat, not including, you know, you don't have to eat eggs, you don't have to eat beef, you don't have, you don't have to eat any of those high fat foods or salmon with all the, the fat in it. We will still get enough fat. If you ate a vegan diet, you would still get enough fat and sometimes too much fat, especially if you're relying on nuts, seeds. Nuts and seeds have a very high percentage, up to 80% fat in, in nuts, and seeds are like up to 65% fat. Now, if you look at a traditional chart uh, for, for macronutrient breakdown, they would like us to consume 50% carbohydrates, 30% fat, and 20% protein. So if you were to eat the standard American diet, your fat intake would be over 50%. There's just no way around it. I mean, you're eating French fries and then you're eating cheese French fries. You're eating that with a bacon burger. I mean, it's just, it's just a disaster. One thing after another, Br brisket, it's just, you don't need to eat buttery mashed potatoes with a brisket. The brisket is enough in itself. The, the, the burger is enough in itself that you don't need to eat fried French, <laughs> French fries. It's just, it's not necessary. Here's a great thing from Dr. Clapper on olive oil. Now, I'm a firm believer <clears throat> that I get enough fat in my diet from eating olives, whole olives, okay, not dousing everything with olive oil, not eating hummus loaded with olive oil, not, you know, uh, from nuts, um, especially nuts. You know, a quarter cup of almonds or walnuts a day is a lot of fat to add to your diet if you're eating the right foods. So I've heard Gary Null and I've heard Udo. Udo is the guy who sells the oil. He's in the oil business. And he claims that you only need like a half a teaspoon of refined fat a day in your diet. As he sells his refined fat, his omega blend. And then Gary Null was like, all you need is like a quarter of a teaspoon of essential fatty acids a day. That is a very, very small amount. So when you're thinking, oh, I'm putting olive oil on my food for all these essential fatty acids and omegas, right? And we're putting like a tablespoon, two tablespoons, we're making salad dressing laden with olive oil. When I, if I use salad dressing, if I use salad dressing that has oil in it, 
I use such the smallest, most minuscule amount. My goal is not to do that, but when I'm out and about, sometimes I kind of have to. But I mean, realistically, if I take some um, coconut aminos, a little lemon juice, something like that, I can make a beautiful salad. And uh, Dr. Clapper is going to talk about in the video that I'm going to show you about how to make salad dressings, what to put in salad dressings. That's at the end of his video, so stay tuned. So, olive oil, is it healthy? Check this out. So what about olive oil? Oh no, not olive oil. It's heart healthy. There's a lot of literature back and forth about olive oil. <clears throat> and I'm not going to wait around in this study and that study, but I'm going to tell you some facts that are absolutely indisputable about olive oil. Both animal fats and vegetable oils are fats, and they all have nine calories in every gram. A tablespoon of olive oil has 13 and a half grams of fat in every tablespoon. has 120 calories in every tablespoon. As a result, you're a big olive oil fan. Liquid oils will help do that. Mm -hmm. And very importantly, it'll keep you there. If you are overweight or your friend's overweight and they're trying to lose weight and they are eating olive oil, they are kidding themselves. It's going to keep you stuck. It is liquid fat. That I can tell you. So yes, olive oil has some adverse health effects and mostly it contributes to obesity. And studies have been done. They've looked at um, uh, overweight women in Greece. The Greeks, by the way, are the fattest country in Europe. Uh, they have the highest rate of obesity of all the uh, um, uh, European nations. And when they looked at um, the women uh, who are, were obese and they did fat biopsies and analyzed the actual fat uh, in their fat stores, 55% uh, of the fat came from olive oil. It sticks to you. So the reality is olive oil is really dense with calories. It is the most calorie dense food we have, uh, 4,000 calories in every pound. Uh, we're trying to get a 4 to 1 ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 olive oil ratio is 14 to 1 omega-6 versus omega-3. And we're trying to lower saturated fat. They want no more than 7% saturated fat in our diet. Olive oil is 14% saturated fat. How does pouring 14% saturated fat help you get to your intake of 7%? It's, it's irrational. Pouring, well, um, the take I'm trying to get there is that pouring olive oil on foods does not suddenly make them heart healthy. This salad is not being made heart healthier because this poor person is pouring olive oil on it. These greens are perfectly heart healthy on their own, even more so. <laughs> the meal this person is about to eat would not be classified as heart healthy. If she pours some olive oil on her salad before eating this sandwich, it is still not a heart healthy meal. It is still not a Mediterranean dinner she's having here, even though she poured olive oil on her salad. This is what Mediterranean diet has become. Oh, I've used olive oil on my salad. <clears throat> unhealthy eating is unhealthy eating. This is how your blood looks after you eat rice and beans. You eat an oil, you eat a, a food filled, you eat a meal filled with fats and oils, and this lovely clear blood turns into a substance that looks like this. Not everybody shows that this grossly, but this is fat in the bloodstream. This is lipemia. And every time you eat a fatty meal, a wave of fat goes through your bloodstream. As I said, not everybody shows it this densely, but everyone has a wave of fat going through their bloodstream uh, when they eat fatty foods. Remember, your body is never not looking. You can't tell your body, look over here and have a cheeseburger down there. What's that? Your arteries know, your liver knows, your heart knows. If you are going to be eating a gooey, greasy pizza like that, it's going to turn your blood fatty. Even if you pour olive oil on your salad, before you eat this greasy piece of pizza, it's still going to turn your blood fatty. Your body is not full. It's never not looking. Don't kid yourself about olive oil making things heart healthy. Mmm, spaghetti alfredo um, with a little bit, bit of bacon and egg yolks there uh, to make it really challenging. Um, this is dripping with oil. If you then pour some olive oil on your salad before you eat the alfredo, 
Do not think this is now a heart healthy meal. It's become a cover for the rationalization of atrociously dangerous eating. Again, your body's never not looking. It's not good to make your blood fatty with any oil after you eat. And as Dr. Esselstyn is trying to tell us, the olive oil and all these refined oils, they're not friendly to your arteries. They make your artery stiff and they keep your arteries from dilating and relaxing uh, in response to nitric oxide, which helps keep our uh, tissues healthy by allowing blood to be delivered to them. And this has been documented. Dr. Vogel has given people uh, food with olive oil in it and to study the effects of their arteries. And uh, he looked at the Mediterranean diet on endothelial function. Uh, and he blew a blood pressure cuff. Uh, he gave them some olive oil, blew a blood pressure cuff uh, for a few minutes, deflated it. And instead of the usual increase in blood flow, there was no increase in blood flow. Olive oil paralyzes the blood vessels from the normal dilation. It's not friendly to artery stuff. And, um, and as they said in the study, in terms of their postprandial, that means after eating effect on endothelial function, the beneficial components of the Mediterranean diet and the Leon Heart Study diets appear to be the antioxidant rich foods, including the vegetables, fruits, and their derivatives. <clears throat> Most likely, the heart benefits of the Mediterranean diet are due to it being basically a vegetarian diet. Uh, they're, they're probably getting healthier in spite of the olive oil, not because of it. So don't see olive oil as a health food. Um, it turns, pouring oil on your food is pouring oil on your food. You don't really want to do, there's no reason to do it medically or nutritionally, and it leads you places you don't want to go. So, no, no, we should take it away olive oil too. What, what do we do without olive oil? Well, what do you really use olive oil for? Two things. You stir fry your veggies in it, and it makes oil dressing with it. That's about all you really use it for. Well, you can certainly stir fry your vegetables in seasoned vegetable broth. It works just as well uh, with a non-stick pan. No reason that you have to use olive oil. In fact, in fact you don't want to use oil, olive oil. It, it, it breaks down in the skillet. Never heat olive oil if you are going to be using it. Well, what about salad dressings? Well, you can certainly make salad dressing without oil. We do it at our clinic three times a day. You just take a blender, uh, put some uh, fresh vegetables in it, maybe half an apple, maybe a half a piece of an orange slice, and, uh, and hit the button, and turns into, into salad dressing. Want a little fat in there, they'll throw in a piece of avocado or a couple of walnuts. Uh, it's easy to make salad dressings without olive oil. You don't need the stuff. And then again, the whole world of flavored vinegars, lots of ways to, to make the, the salad dressings taste good. So what's the take home of all of this? Where do we go with all this? Salt, sugar, and oils. <clears throat> Outside of the little bit in whole foods that nature naturally put there, these are not health foods. They are taste treats. Have that firmly in your understanding. And they are too easy to use too much of, and that's the problem. Well, there's salt in the, in the restaurant and packaged foods. Uh, we eat sugar as a food, we're pouring oil uh, over our foods, and the result is the hospitals are filled uh, with people with strokes, heart attacks, colon cancers, etc. So for that reason, more and more nutritionally oriented physicians, dietitians, etc., are saying, you know, Americans, when people eating a Western diet, have cl clearly shown that moderation does not work. They cannot do it. A little bit turns into a lot. And so for that reason, the policy that a lot of us are coming to is, you know, when it comes to added salt, added sugar, added oils, none is probably the best. Just, just don't use the stuff and throw the oils out. And that you, leaves you at uh, the uh, interesting position of having an SOS-free diet, salt, oil, and sugar-free diet eating style.